Hello everyone, welcome back to OC Recovery's YouTube channel. Today Rob has asked me to do a post on one of the more recent um, posts he did on his Instagram that kind of got some, you know, good feedback and it got some bad feedback. So we wanted to talk about maybe, you know, what we meant for the people that potentially might have taken it the wrong way and might not have seen it uh, where we were coming from because I do think that this topic is is actually really important to cover. Um, it's something I fell for a lot and I think the misinterpretations in the post, it, it's good to make this video to clear it up. So don't forget to subscribe, like that video. Let me know if you agree with me. Let me know if you don't agree with me. As many of you know who watch my videos, I go through and I answer a lot of the um, questions that people ask because I think it's important to give you feedback from my experience, what I don't think works, what I think works, what Rob and I talk about in other moderators. So the I got my laptop right here. If you keep seeing me looking, I'm looking at my laptop because I have the three points right here. So before that, I want to start by saying that we, you know, Rob was a really su bad sufferer, had multiple different themes. I suffered tremendously with um, chronic anxiety, uh, whether it was GAD or just OCD, it doesn't matter, and sensory motor. And we definitely understand how tough it can be to have these disorders and how easy it can be, as Moment said in his recent two-year video, you know, to lash out at people. It, it is an understandable process, but that doesn't mean we can't bring that down over time. And in, in no way are we saying that, you know, the person who's lashing out at someone that's, you know, that they're a bad person is just saying that, you know, those actions and those beliefs that you're holding and, you know, because there's a lot of people that think, you know, because you're suffering, whether it's OCD, anxiety, or something else, whether it's cancer or something like that, that, that gives people permission to act a certain way. And I don't see that. I, I have a friend who is well on their way out. He's a 50-year-old male, male with stage 4 emphysema. I'm actually going to be seeing him in 31 minutes after I make this video. And uh, his outlook on life is great. We understand and accept his suffering. And he has a great sport about being very, very, very close to the end of his life. And um, he understands that that is something that he's going through and that it's not the healthiest thing to act out in certain ways on other people. And that's what we're trying to highlight. In no way are we highlighting that the people who are suffering are in some way bad people as some people might have taken it. So let's look at the first one. Well, let's read the post. Having OCD doesn't entitle you to be rude to your friends and family when triggered, expect everyone to do everything for you, have full control over all your friends and family's plans, never ask them, never have to ask them how they are. Uh, all four of these I did a lot and it never benefited me at all. Um, even though there's a lot of people out there that might think these things are completely okay, I see where they're coming from, but it still doesn't benefit the recovery journey for ourselves and the people in our, in our life, whether it's friends, family, intimate relationships, and so forth. And then Rob wrote, compassion for those around you is an important part of the OCD recovery journey. I'm triggered, I have OCD is not an excuse for bad behavior. It's important to remember mom has a life too, our friends have a life too. Yes, it's unfortunate having OCD, but we still need to try and function and fit in as best as we can. Hashtag OCD awareness. Now, this is taken completely wrong because it's not usually looked at through this lens. It's usually, it's social media. We're not talking about what's going on in other areas, but social media tends to be almost like the vigilant arena of mental health um, irrationality. Um, a lot of people that are giving advice the advice is very ill-advised and, and play very much into the victim mentality, which I can promise you there's no research on earth that says that playing the victim is beneficial for your life, for you or the people around you. Zero. I've never read a systematic review that has ever said that being a victim is good for you and good for people around you. You'll never, never see it. But that point won't die, but I understand because you don't know what you don't know. So being rude to your friends and family when triggered. When I was super bad, I treated my wife pretty terribly. Understandably so. I was didn't know what was going on and not saying it was right, but it was understandable why I was acting that way. Now when you act that way and you use stuff like, you don't understand, I promise you the term, you don't understand, came out of my mouth more times in, in a one year period from J June 2019 to June, June 2020, that came out of my mouth a million times. 
Not a million, but you know what I mean. It came out a lot. It never did anything. Of course they're not going to understand. It's a very, it's just like you and me don't understand what it's like that stage for pancreatic cancer. Um, it's very hard to under, understand OCD. So it's understandable on why we act out this way. This doesn't mean this behavior is good. Just like anger. Anger is a natural human emotion. We know that. You're never going to live in some place where you never feel anger or rage again. But the reason why anger and rage persists in modern day society and all over the world is the beliefs that we hold that cause anger. So you should not do that. You should not say that. What a terrible person you are. What that does is that brings out the anger and the rage feelings. So anytime anyone's trying to portray that being a victim is good, again, I understand why it might feel like that, but the ROI is zero. It's negative 100. It's actually not zero because zero would be neutral. It's, it's negative 100. Your ROI is negative because it impacts everything around you negatively. Just the reality that most people don't want to hear. Expect everyone to do everything for you. So this is humongous. In OCD recovery, the only people that can bring you to recovery is you. Wait, right there, baby. You. Just like the only person that could bring me to recovery was myself. It's hard to hear. Now, Rob, moderators, other people I've worked with outside, outside OCD recovery, books on the reading list, other books, my, my mom, my sister, my dogs, Erica, the couch, whatever it may be can provide some insight. But insight alone is the least most important part. Insight is important to gather. As I always say, insight opens the door, but all it does is open the door. The journey through the mountains all the way up to Everest comes from you. No one's going to hold your hand when you go through that. There's a lot of wishy-washy nonsense in mental health on social media. We have to, we highlight this for a reason because it doesn't, it doesn't get us anywhere. And it's very triggering. The only reason it's triggering, it's not because of, remember, it might be frustrating to hear that, but it's triggering because of the belief you're holding against it. That's the main reason why you're triggered and you feel all the anxiety and the all this and blah, blah, blah. Um, number three, you have full control all over your friends and family's plans. Oh my gosh. The amount of times that I had Erica, it, I'm going to be very honest on what I did. Some of you might relate. Anytime we were going to do something and I didn't feel like doing it, I would say all sorts of crazy suicidal ideations. I was, the act itself was very selfish what I was doing. No one wants to hear that, but it's the truth. Not that I'm a selfish person, person, but because I was suffering, it's understandably why I would act that way, but it still doesn't take away that me going, I don't want to do that. I don't want to live anymore. I'm going to take my own life. And, you know, if you don't have any tools, I mean, it's reasonable why you would say that. But the further you get along and the more you realize that using that as like a compulsive behavior, how I was doing it to get attention was a very, very selfish move. The move itself, not me as a person, that move, that piece on the chessboard was a selfish move. I know you don't want to hear that. You're like, I'm not a selfish person. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the move is selfish. Because of this, it's understandable, but it's still a selfish move. I know no one wants to hear that, but this is, a, this is probably going to be one of the realest, you know, po videos I've ever made. It's very important to hear this. Um, never have to ask them how they are. I promise you for two years straight, I never asked Erica one time how she was. Her grandma died, who she was super close with, her mom's mother, super close. I never asked her one time. She didn't even go to the funeral. She didn't go to her grandma's funeral because she was too worried about me, which is understandable. We've now developed, because my OCD recovery journey has not just been me. It's been Erica and me. And we've gone through this together and we've both learned. So I never asked how, it was, it's so easy to be self-caught up. Like just like you're caught up in what's going on with you. Because as we say, it's it's like lo looking through a like a misted mirror. Like it's just like a, a window. It's all OCD, all OCD. But that doesn't actually get us anywhere, which is unfortunate. So, um, and then, so here we go. Let's go into what he actually wrote. Compa like I said before, compassion for those around you is an important part of the OCD recovery journey. It is important to pursue things outside of yourself. We know that. That's been proven in all sorts of data. I'm triggered 
I have OCD is not an excuse for bad behavior. He's not saying that you're a bad person. He's saying to be, to look just like I had to. And I had to think to myself, I've never told anyone this. You, all of you watching this, ladies and gentlemen, are the first time ever anyone has heard this besides Rob and my wife. So when I would say stuff like that, like I'm going to kill myself and all this crazy terminology and understandably so in order to get her to pay attention to me, that act was bad behavior. It was not justified in the way I thought it was. It was understandable, but it wasn't justified. People combine understanding, acceptance with justifying. Just like I talk about, there's a difference between rational thinking and rationalizing. When you rationalize something, you can rationalize anything on earth. You could be like, I, I committed this bank robbery because I have no money and it, it's, I need money. Like you could do that instead of saying, well, you know, could rob the bank, but probably wouldn't benefit the people in the bank, might cause them some PTSD if I go in there with an automatic weapon and scare them. And then they might have to deal with some psychology issues and stuff like that. But rationalizing, anyone can rationalize anything. So this is a super important topic. It's a great conversation. I'm, I'm over here up by myself, all hyped up talking about this because I fell for this a lot. You know, it was something that, you know, was so, it, it's, <laughs> I get it. I, like, I get it. You know, when you're chronically suffering and you're super stuck, whether it's intrusive thoughts, images, sensation, urges, or a combination of all of them, you know, it's easy to go down that route. But it's good to step out of the box and say, this is why this is not healthy for others around me and myself. The self-pity route, 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 understandable, but not justifiable. Because if you justify it, you're just going to stay in the self-pity route. Say, I understand why I did that. I get it. I didn't like that. I didn't like that I did that. That move was selfish with the suicide stuff I was saying. How can I bring that down? What belief do I have to work on to go forward? Because as Albert Ellis said, which is very important, one of the number one characteristics of adulthood is taking pure responsibility for yourself, whether you did whatever you did happen to you or you didn't. So if you're blaming OCD on other people, if you're like, oh, this isn't fair, that will get you nowhere. You are a person who did not choose your brain. You have OCD. It's time to move forward. That's the reality. Let me know what you thought about this video. It's a little bit more blunt. Every once in a while, the jersey comes out, and it's important to talk about this. Um, and we don't mean this, like I said. We're not demeaning you, saying you're a, a bad person. We're talking about the reality of acts that are not beneficial and why they are considered bad behaviors. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like that video. Let me know if you want to see anything else like this because we have the other one that Rob posted, which was, you know, I get why, you know, it got the the comments it did. You know, your mom's job is not too blank. People really didn't like that one. But again, I understand why they see it that way. So thank you so much for watching. I'll definitely cover that one next. And have a great day.